Castlevania rose from its grave and onto your NES back in 1986, and it's, well, it's Castlevania. If you guys don't know what Castlevania is yet, then, well, I truly feel for you. If not, then don't fret, as we'll do our best to explain why Castlevania is considered to be one of the greatest games of all time, and easily one of the best games ever released on the NES. So grab your favorite whip and cross, because we're about to see if Dracula and his minions can stand up to modern day scrutiny. Start up Castlevania and you're greeted to one of the all-time classic openings to a game, as Simon Belmont approaches Dracula's castle for the very first time, ready to take on anything that Dracula has to throw at him. After a quick walk up to the castle gate and collecting a few power-ups along the way, you enter the castle to the first stage of the game, and this is where you'll come to grips with controlling Simon. As you probably expect from an early NES game, the controls are incredibly simple to learn. The A button jumps, while the B button swings your whip at anything in front of you. And and that's mostly it. The only other thing you can do is use whatever special weapon you've picked up by pressing up and attack at the same time. Get those fundamentals down and you should be able to tackle just about anything Castlevania has to throw at you. And yes, Castlevania is going to throw a lot at you. From ghosts to fire-breathing dragon skulls, the monsters you'll face off with in Castlevania will be coming at you at a near constant pace as you explore the castle. The enemies in Castlevania are as relentless as they are ugly, and you'll have to learn each one's patterns and attacks intimately to get past them without taking damage. The simplest of which will just be enemies running straight at you in the hopes that I guess you don't see them or something. Others mix things up a little bit by throwing axes at you, or by spasming all over the place, making it hard to get a hit on them. And of course you can't talk about a Castlevania game without mentioning those godforsaken Medusa heads that continuously fly all over the screen at you in the most annoying patterns ever. Get past all those guys though and you'll be rewarded a boss at the end of each stage to deal with. And while they may look large and easy to hit, you'll probably find yourself getting slammed by all the crap that they're throwing at you. Keep at it though and you should be able to take them down without too many curse words shouted at the TV. Beat the boss and it's time to pull out the map to see where you're going next and and then it's on to the next stage to do it all over again. As you make your way through the depths of Dracula's castle, you'll come across a few things that'll help you deal with the constant barrage of enemies coming at your face, including a nice assortment of power-ups you find hidden in various candles in each stage. I mean, I guess if you're gonna hide a weapon, then a candle's as good a place as any. The first thing you'll need to start powering up is your whip's attack and length by collecting whip power-ups. At first your whip looks like a wet spaghetti noodle with barely any reach at all, but collect three power-ups and you've got a much more powerful whip that can cover a lot more distance. Keeping your whip powered up is hugely important since it can mow down most monsters and bosses without too much effort at its most powerful state. But if you die, then you're stuck back with that spaghetti noodle again until you can find more power-ups, and that can make the game even harder than it all already is. Besides the whip power-ups, you'll also find the aforementioned special weapons that effectively give you a second weapon to throw at enemies. Some are self-explanatory like the axe and the dagger, while others like the stopwatch offer up alternative ways to get past frustrating parts of the game. But don't just go around throwing them at everything, as you can only use them if you've collected enough hearts along the way. These effectively act as your special weapon ammo, so try to keep them around for when you need them most, like stages that are a real pain in the ass or bosses. You can also find a few other things things that are lying around to help you as well, like the screen clearing cross and the ever famous turkey hidden in a wall to recover some of your health, but that's generally all the help the game's gonna give you. The rest is gonna be left entirely up to you to get through, and trust me, it ain't gonna be easy. Yes, Castlevania is hard, really hard. Once you manage to beat that first boss, the training wheels come off, and Castlevania turns into one of the most challenging games released on the NES at the time. You'll quickly find yourself dealing with pixel-perfect jumps, enemies with incredibly cheap patterns, and bosses that can decimate you in just a few seconds. And if it's your first time playing the game, expect countless game over screens, as Castlevania will show no mercy through any of its six nightmarish levels. If you're determined to see it through to the end and take down Dracula, then get ready for hours of controller tossing and screaming at the TV. But honestly, the challenge is actually one of Castlevania's best qualities, since it's the kind of challenge that constantly makes you want to keep trying over and over again. While the game can certainly be cheap at times, it's never enough to make you want to give up completely. 
Few games have ever done difficulty this well, and not even Castlevania's own sequels could match the just one more try mentality that this game has. Finally beating a stage after dozens of tries offers up a level of satisfaction that few games have ever matched. So yeah, Castlevania may be hard, but it's hard in the best ways possible. And while you may be playing each stage over and over due to that difficulty, you'll at least be treated to some of the best graphics and music the NES has ever offered up. The game may obviously be simplistic looking, but its iconic settings, enemies, and bosses make each stage feel like a unique place in the castle. You'll go from basic hallways to the very depths of the castle on your trip through it, and they all look great. You also get treated to one of the best soundtracks ever composed for a game as you play, making those constant deaths just a little bit easier to swallow. Obviously, there's very little you could complain about with Castlevania, but if you're anal enough, like us, you could probably find a few problems here and there to bitch about. I know, I know, how dare I criticize one of the finest NES games ever put onto a cartridge? Well, maybe it's because I spent so much time playing it as a kid that I've certainly got a few pet peeves that stretch across all games, because they originated in Castlevania. For one, getting knocked back when you get hit is the one thing you can put in your game now if you want me to instantly put the controller down and walk away. Way. In fact, I'd wager that well over 50% of my deaths in this game are due to that stupid knockback, and it's never been easy to swallow, especially since it always manages to knock you off the ledge at the worst possible time. Besides that, you could say that Simon's jump is way too heavy feeling, since he seems to stop about halfway and then just sort of floats there for a second. It's definitely weird, but you eventually get used to it. Those complaints are also minor to the overall package though, that it really just kind of comes off sounding like we're whining about things because Castlevania is basically near perfect in just about everything it does. And the fact that this was the first game ever released in the series makes it even more impressive. There's little question that all of us here at Retrovania love Castlevania. For me personally, Castlevania was the very first NES game I owned as a kid, and it's provided hundreds and hundreds of hours of fun ever since then. It single-handedly shaped what I expected a game to be from there on out, obviously inspires more than a few things on this very channel. So if you've somehow never played Castlevania, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're waiting for then. This is one of the first games you play instantly if you're at all interested in playing classic video games. It may be hard as nails, but I can safely say that every second spent yelling and cursing at the screen is worth it to experience the reason that a lot of us got hooked on video games in the first place. And it's obviously just as much fun to play these days as it was back in 1986. So go grab a copy of Castlevania for yourself, since there's never been a better time to put Dracula back in his coffin for the first time, or the 500th time.